Hello, this is John Long with Clean Bread and Cheese Creek, and today is Sunday, September the 25th, 2011, and we are here to document how Bread and Cheese Creek in the North Point section looks after we had over 150 volunteers show up yesterday and clean this section. I mean, already you could see how beautiful this is compared to before. We had people show up from all over the place, not just the Dundalk area, to help with this cleanup. We had uh, several people from Constellation Energy come out. We had people from St. Timothy School come out. We had Towson University History Department, my alma mater, come out. Um, tons of community people from all sorts of different organizations came out. And the funny thing is, as we walk along, you can see how beautiful this little creek can be. I mean, it's, it's, it's really a hidden treasure. And places where you might see, as we walk along, huge holes in the ground, like this one right here, is where there was a shopping cart that was so deeply buried that, that you could barely even see the handle. That was removed, and I guess about it for an hour or more, I noticed that the Towson University uh, history guys were working on that one. And, you know, people really put their backs into it when they come out here. I don't, I don't think that, you know, a lot of people, unless you've been out to one of our cleanups, realize how hard we actually work. Um, and it's all the volunteers. I mean, it's true, you know, that we organize the event and we try and get, you know, make sure we have food and that we make sure that we have people, you know, are comfortable and we have tools and equipment for them to use. But none of that matters a hell of beans if you don't have the volunteers come out. I don't know if you guys can see this, but as we're walking along, there are lots of little tadpoles and pollywogs skittering about underneath the water. And that's always a wonderful sign. Tons of little fish. When we first started these cleanups, you didn't see this very often. The more we continue with our cleanup of Bread and Cheese Creek, this just keeps coming more and more often. I should say more and more prolific. Um, once again, I mean, look at this. This is beautiful. I'm just taking a minute while we're to stop walking to just show you how incredible this is. I mean, who would not want to preserve this? I mean... God, when I was a child, I remember playing in this stream, and, and I know many of our volunteers have come out and related the same trail, you know. Some of their happiest memories of a, as a child is, you know, sailing paper boats, you know, skipping stones, catching tadpoles for bait, um, just wonderful activities like that that every child should experience. And to have a neighborhood stream like this is just a resource, which to me is, you know, it's incredible, and it's something we need to preserve, something we need to protect. And I'm so glad to see that so many other people feel the same way that I do. But, I mean, not only is this a beautiful little stream, but this is a historic stream, too. I and mean, during the War of 1812, both the British and the American troops camped along it. The Methodist Meeting House, which is what the British used as their headquarters, as well as what was used as a field hospital for both sides was along the stream as well. Uh, and this is also the rallying point for the American troops before they launched their second attack against the British. I mean, it's part of our history. The War of 1812 was called the Second War of Independence, and it really is. Even though a lot of people unfortunately don't know as much about it as they should. If we had lost the War of 1812, we would have been British subjects again. That's no doubt about that. So once again, I mean, look at how gorgeous this is. And I remember, you saw the videos I shot before and had huge amounts of trash. And it's gone. I mean, and the wonderful thing about this is we know that all of the community especially those living along the stream, make sure it tries to make their best to make sure it doesn't come back. I mean, of course, we're going to get pollution that's going to flow in off the streams, 
I should off the streets and the parking lots, which we're fighting against as well because the antiquated stormwater management laws around here allow for direct drainage from these impervious surfaces. And behind the shopping centers, a lot of time there's overflowing dumpsters because the companies don't want to pay for multiple pickups. And that's how trash gets in here as well. But I honestly believe and I honestly don't think that citizens are doing is the dumping. I mean, they may have at one time, but the mindset is changing. And everybody wants to preserve this little creek and save it and make it the beautiful thing it is and should be. Uh, we're coming up to North Point Road Bridge. See the little raccoon tracks in the sand, too? That's always a nice thing to see. Um, we're going to cross over Old North Point Road and get to the next section. This is, as you can see, is a very low-lying bridge. And I'm sure you've seen from my other videos that, once again, due to antiquated stormwater management, this bridge floods out every time we get even a moderate rain. So we're going to quickly make our way across and get to the other side. <laughs> This section of land we're coming up to go into the stream right now is where the Methodist Meeting House was located. And this is where there's going to be a monument for it along the National Historic Trail. On the other side of the stream where we were is where there's going to be a monument dedicated to the rallying point for the American troops during the War of 1812. So, you can see how low the bridge sits above the water, which just makes things absolutely ridiculous whenever it rains too much. So back on with our tour of the cleanup area. Once again, look at this. Is this not beautiful? You'd be hard-pressed to find anything more picturesque than this. And, you know, despite the heavy rains and the very, very muddy conditions that we endured, we had over 150 people come out, which to me really shows how much the community cares. Now, I dare say that if we had had nice weather, and nice weather was forecasted, it probably would have been much more than that. But as it is, I mean, 150 people with uncertain weather conditions, I mean, I'm astounded and pleasantly surprised. Uh, some other organizations I definitely have to thank, thank I should say, is I have to thank uh, the De DEPS, which used to be called DEPROM, Baltimore County Department of Environmental Protection and Sustainability, who allowed us n not only the use of an Argos and crew the day before during the torrential rains, but also allowed us the use of two Argoses on the day of the cleanup, which I, I don't think it can be understated how much that truly helped. I mean, the amount, the sheer amount of trash that these things were able to move, uh, it kept volunteers from having to kill themselves to pull it into the, onto the land. Because uh, access on this side of the North Point Road Bridge is fairly limited. So we were able to load off everything on the Argos's, and the Argos's use for pulling out shopping carts is just, and tires, is absolutely astounding. Remember the uh, trash-filled swamp area next to this creek where I showed you that was completely littered before with trash? Take a look at it now. Nothing. Nothing. I saw a dedicated group of volunteers up on this little area, marsh area, the entire day pulling out piece by piece of trash. That's trash that will not flow back into here next time we have a storm event. Um, once again, it usually takes most of the time, depending upon how deeply buried a shopping cart is, about an hour to dig one out. Whereas when we have the use of one of the Argos vehicles, it takes maybe five to ten minutes. So it's a much better use of manpower picking up the other trash.
again, here's another area where you could see, which was at one time completely littered with trash. It's nothing now but natural. As we continue on, I also would like to ch thank Chick-fil-A for donating four trays of nuggets for us, which disappeared in no time. Everybody loves Chick-fil-A nuggets. Uh, I would also like to thank Mr. Thomas Coffin, who allowed us to use his land as our staging area, and who his company, G&H Hercules Auto Parts, also donated a check to us to help us pay for some of these things that we did for our cleanup. Um, I would also like to thank Mr. Wayne Ching, uh, a local, very involved philanthropist, who also has supported us greatly. Um, and if I forget anyone, I, I apologize, but the thank yous will also be coming out in the email. Uh, once again, here's another area of the swamp that was completely encrusted with trash. And you can see it's nothing there now. I'd also like to thank the Dundalk Renaissance Corporation for helping us get the word out about our cleanups and helping to get people involved. Uh, they're another major help. Um, I, once again, I, I, I'm, you know, we're very, you know, people make fun of people in Dundalk. You know, and to me, I've always thought Dundalk's been a bad rap because I grew up here. And at the DRC meeting, where people, they said, you know, one of the top things people thought of is that they were hardworking, proud, blue-collar, and trash were the things they thought of Dundalk. You know what? I think this creek right here shows trash is something that if you're going to think about it of Dundalkians, it's they hark hard to remove trash. I mean, every cleanup that I've been to, because we assist with other cleanups as well, we don't just do Bread and Cheese Creek, although that's the one we run. When we go to the Back River Restoration cleanups, when we've gone to the Stansbury cleanups, we see volunteers working their tails off. Dundalk citizens. So, if you're going to think Dundalk citizens and trash, I think I'd make it Dundalk citizens trying to get rid of trash, trying to clean the environment. I think that is much more appropriate. Yes, there's a big frog just jumped in. Unfortunately, he was out of the lens, but once again, I don't see how anybody cannot just love what all our volunteers are doing here. It's just, you, I mean, look here, we're in a little wooded paradise area. You would never have a clue that we are surrounded by modular homes and shopping centers, you would never have an idea. But you know what? This is something we should preserve, something that we need to hang on. Because it's a little piece of paradise right in the middle of it all. I mean, how many communities have a beautiful little stream? And we can continue to work on this. We're right to the next, next to the North Point pumping station, which is what you hear right now going off. I apologize for the noise. But look at this. What do you see on the water? Nothing but leaves. That's what it should be. And once again, I cannot say enough good and enough thank yous for everybody who came out and for those who couldn't come out but lent their support and for all those organizations which helped us by, like, the International Ocean Conservancy who helped us. It's another one we need to thank who gave us bottled water and some trash bags and everything else. And of course, the Baltimore Community Foundation, whose grant it was that enabled us to, to provide food and t-shirts to all our volunteers. So we are now at the North Point Boulevard Bridge, which is where our cleanup ended. That's where our cleanup will continue on April 14th, 2014, as we head toward the Nor Norris Farm area. Uh, this will also be part of Project Clean Stream 2012. So look for us 
We thank you again for all your help. We truly appreciate everything, all our volunteers and sponsors. If I've forgotten anyone, I truly apologize, but we'll be sending out written thank yous as well. Once again, this is John Long, Clean Bread and Cheese Creek, and thank you very much for all your support.